Hey guys, this is Katie. My husband and I um, work here on the farm. We have two handsome boys that are growing up quickly. Um, I am usually the one that you will contact or talk to if you call, text, message the farm in any way. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. The writing process can be messy. In my current job on the farm, I get the privilege of seeing most written pieces before they are posted publicly. I also get to see people's anxieties as they hand me work from their hearts and various levels of polished. I may get the original chicken scratching that Aunt Jill lovingly calls the sloppy copy, or I may only get to see the final copy. Either way, as with life, the sloppy copy is a necessary part of any final project. It can be embarrassing because of all of the mistakes you should have caught or the errors you didn't even know were wrong. But you must do this step in order to get to the next step. As a recovering perfectionist, this realization has been pivotal for me. As a kid and adult, I am often the one that can stump any teacher or boss with so many suggestions they just throw their hands up. This is not due to my deep understanding or profound wisdom, but quite the opposite. I can get so pulled down by the irrelevant details that I will someday need for proficiency, but I can't even perform the simple tasks they presented. Along the way, I've, been, I've had to embrace my fear of failure by knowing that I will fail but I won't be able to learn or experience anything if I don't go through this process. I have fallen on my face, literally and figuratively, so many times at this point that I sort of look forward to it as I know it is a sign that I'm learning. The new things I've learned along the way have been worth the temporary anxiety, the frustration, and the failure. I'm learning that the revisions, the learning, the refining, are the fun parts of life. Those are the times when I'm growing and soaking up the world around me instead of dwelling on my depression and anxiety. It is after I've pushed through this uncertainty and I've discovered freedom that comes with failure. I am able to see that I made a mistake, but I am not a mistake. I fail, but I am not a failure. I am frustrated, but I am not depressed. I am pushing forward and looking forward not dwelling on the past or fears about the future. This allows me to refine my character as well by attempting new behaviors that are unfamiliar but necessary. And let me tell you, the sloppy copy as well as the next few revisions are rarely good, but they are necessary, so we need, so we need not be embarrassed by them. Like me, if you were trying that is the most important thing. Keep walking forward, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ, in Philippians 1, 6. In the process, I am desperately trying not to teach my youngest son to accept this perfectionist paralysis in his young life. So I wanted to share a saying that we've come up with through many frustrating days of homeschooling. First, do what you know to do, then do step two. It helps him to stop, take a breath, look, and see if there is anything he can do. Then he can focus on that one thing. Once that is done, he looks to see what is next. At first, it will seem like you are going nowhere or just taking baby steps, but keep your hand to the plow. God will always have something in front of you if your reliance is on him. And don't worry, there is no need for a final copy until you pass from this earth. And he knows when you are ready for that as well. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast anointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Job chapter 14, verse 5.
Kate. Hey, good to see you again. Good to see you. All right. So, what I hear you say in all of this that you're learning to be human, to be what God made you, is not a perfectionist. Right. So, right. somewhere down the line, we were told, you were told, that you needed to be a perfectionist. Okay. Right, yes. So let me ask you a question. I don't know if you know the answer now or not, but let me ask you the question. So what was the advantage to you of being a perfectionist emotionally? Well, it isolated me from others. <laughs> um, I didn't have to interact with other people and connect, like be personally connected to other people. Um, I could walk in a room and just be superior by actions, but... No one knew me. I didn't know anyone else. I guess I'm kind of saying the same thing over and over in different ways. <laughs> so, what you said your perfectionist was a way to cover your fear. Oh, yeah. So that you could look at other people and go, um, I don't have to try to be a part of you. Mm -hmm. I'm, because I'm afraid of being a part of you if I try that I am fearful of that. I, I'm fear of inter afraid of interacting. I'm afraid of, of being um, like you for fear that you won't like me. Right, right. So, so perfectionism puts on this superiority, mm -hmm. which is nothing but a mask of fear. Well, I think it started out that way, and it did definitely serve that purpose, but I also think it turned into arrogance and superiority. Like, yeah. It um and it, instead yeah instead of avoid, avoiding things out of fear or out of I'm not sure if I can or I don't know what the expectation is it, then it would turn into well why didn't they work hard or why didn't where were they when I was working you know or it became an isolation by another name mm -hmm. um and I don't know if that was to justify the isolation and and I or maybe to justify the fear I don't know but that's what it turned into <laughs> yeah because I think you're absolutely right because it, it certainly isolated you mm -hmm. from other people and yet isolation is not anything that deep deep down inside void of fear we we would welcome okay so maybe it became a way to justify continuing to be isolated I don't know mm -hmm. the superiority I don't know Mm -hmm. or the arrogance. So if, if we look deeper into that and said, so why why did you want to be isolated in the first place? I think it started out as fear. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I remember, I, and I think I've told my sister this, I remember like watching her play and like just kid things, like watching her be with other people, um, even like small things like other kids picking on her, but like in a friendly manner, like, just sitting there like, I wish I knew how to do that. Instead of like sitting here watching other kids play, I wish I knew how to start that. Of course, because I was so reclusive in it, no one started the picking on of the, the, the play with me either, and I didn't know how to start it. So, yeah, maybe then that's where the arrogance came in. I don't know, but, yeah, I, I remember like not wanting that but not knowing how to. Yeah, overcome it. Because I see arrogance many times. We see people arrogant, and they're just like, you don't like them. But I see arrogance as their shield. Like, uh, yeah, well, I know that you would reject me, so I'm mm -hmm. going to reject you through my own arrogance, mm -hmm. and and all of that. Now, you have to tear that wall down to be you. What you wrote in your blog, mm -hmm. you, you have to tear that down. And what, what you said in there, I know if I make a mistake, I'm not a mistake. Mm -hmm. I think that's phenomenal because otherwise you based all of your not being a mistake, acceptability, whatever you want to say that made you good, or made you in your own mind good on what you did. Oh, yeah. Therefore, people couldn't reject you, and you could reject them. If they rejected you, you said, well, you're stupid. Right. You don't try hard enough. Right. And if you did what I did, you would. And it further pushed people further away from what you did. Right. And then in a, to adulthood, it, it, like I talked about, it just became that paralysis where, you know, the, the, I figured out the formula for school, but, like, beyond that, it was like, okay, now how do I live? <laughs> how do I 
I mean, I, I may have figured out the formula for the workplace as far as like the requirements for the job, but I couldn't, I couldn't relate to other people. I couldn't interact with other people. Um, I couldn't build rapport. I, you know, I was at the time teaching. I mean, I couldn't, you know, even interact with like littles and stuff because I had no experience in being. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just performing. Yeah. And, and I think that says a great deal in the sense that here you were as a child growing yeah. up and you convinced everybody around you, family and otherwise, no, I'm just superior. Mm -hmm. I'm just a perfectionist. You know, I remember the story being told about <laughs> not wanting to wear a belt, a particular kind of belt, because it didn't define you. And I think it was the color. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't remember it, thank goodness. <laughs> I know it was a color, but now I No, I, I've heard the stories. I really don't remember it. <laughs> or holding your breath till you passed yeah. out. Yeah, I also held my breath till I passed out. Because then you, I couldn't put it on if I was passed out. <laughs> but I think that the awesomeness is you can come and say, you know, I'm free from that. Because mm -hmm. it was not true. None of it was true. It was mm. based on a lie. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm seeing that, you know what? Um... I can make mistakes, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make me a mistake. In fact, it makes me human. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, no, I'm not human. Well, what are you? Yeah. You know, what's the other alternative to being human? Yeah, isolated and, yeah. And one, I think, and I, I don't know, I don't want to give the wrong perception because there's times, like, I still have, I don't know what how to describe it, but I still have that feeling of anxiety or that feeling of fear mm -hmm. or that feeling of failure, but, like, I have to learn to just take that breath and go, okay, I don't know if I can do it until I've tried it. And I don't, I have to walk through that first. And sometimes I find out I can't. Sometimes I find out I listen to the wrong advice. Sometimes I figure out it opens up doors for me to connect to someone I would have never talked to before or whatever. But it's, life isn't about those formulas and it's not about accomplishing those tasks. It's doing and what's in front of us. If I don't know. It's about identifying, you know, which is what we have to do in life, to identify with our fellow man, mm -hmm. to identify and have relationship, because relationship's the most important thing there is. Mm -hmm. Then we have to reconcile, I will make mistakes, mm -hmm. and that's okay. I'm, in fact, I do. <laughs> Every you know, day, yeah. Do. I just got to call them what they are. Mm -hmm. Not your fault, yeah. not, but my fault. Yeah. So, yeah, owning I, mistakes, think, that's a whole other blog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would expect another blog out of that. Be, no, no, seriously. People out there are like that. People still think that the word perfectionism exists like, outside of God. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't exist outside of God. Mm -hmm. It cannot exist outside of God. Mm -hmm. He's the only one that's perfect. Yeah. Oh, I know. I hear people use it as a compliment all the time, and I, I just cringe on the inside, especially when they're doing it to little to littles. Oh, yeah. Because I'm like, I know you're trying to compliment them because you you see that they're working hard, but see their person, not not the job they're doing, not not their. I don't know. I I, <laughs> I think, I think the words of Christ when he was describing what he himself describes as. An acceptable end. They said, "Well done, mm -hmm. well done. Not perfectly done. Well done, mm -hmm. thou good and faithful servant." In other words, okay, if you fall down, get back up. Mm -hmm. Like you said, okay, mm -hmm. it's life is about that. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. Paul said, "I fought a good fight. I finished the course." No, didn't say how long it took him to finish the course. <laughs> you know. And, and how many times he fell down in the process, but got back up. Mm -hmm. So I think you're truly, whatever you've lived, Katie, is a gift of God mm -hmm. that will help other people understand because they won't believe you until you hit on those very credible emotional things, word that you put together that everybody who experiences that puts the words together the same way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when they do that, then they know there's freedom because that's what we've come to do. We've come to, as Christ said, and Christ said us, we've come to set the captive free. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and what's the point of our struggles if we can't help someone else? Absolutely. I mean, Abs it's pointless. Yeah. It's pointless. It's yeah. Endless. Especially, if, yeah, even worse if we pass on those lies. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. I expect more blogs in that direction, please. <laughs> okay. Thank you brought you. up another idea. <laughs> yeah, because if you look at me and you say, Mike, you suffer from perfectionism, <laughs> you're going to all have Yeah. <laughs> Not that we all don't have our own paths to walk, but... Oh, and yeah, all of them well, are different. Yeah, yeah. Perfectionism was, it's not your, it was I, not your burden. When I was in college, I'd make an, an A, and then I'd go, okay, I made an A, I'll go back and make a C. <laughs> That's all I needed to do. I was a slob, <laughs> except in the few areas I wanted to excel, and then I excelled. But even God brought me out of that and said, Mike, the end of that is not life. So, great, Katie. Thanks so much. Thank Charlotte. you. You're Appreciate welcome. <laughs> Hey y'all, thanks for joining us for Around the Supper Table. At Sanctuary Family Farms, we want to be real. Whether that's through our blogs, daily verses, or even Nana's recipes, we want to share the messages that God has laid on each of our hearts. If you liked what you heard today or want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at Sanctuary Family Farms or our website at www.sanctuaryfamilyfarms.com where we share our recipes and blogs and sell farm fresh beef and pork. We can't wait for you to join us again for next week's episode.